sexual horrors and homicide is going to be looking at Brendan Abbott, the postcard bandit. Who is Brendan James Abbott? He was born on the 8th of May 1962. His first brush with the law was when he was seven years old and was caught stealing racing pigeons from his neighbour. In 1974, Brendan was living in Tom Price with his mother, Thelma, his brother, Glenn, and sister, Diane. His other brother, David, and sister, Janet, were no longer living at home. This was the year there was a major turning point in Brendan's life. He was charged with aggravated assault against a girl at school in Tom Price, and Brendan ended up being awarded state. In 1979, age 17, Brendan finally got his license, which also happened to get him his first spell in jail. Brendan liked to drive fast in the shortest possible time down the quarter mile in the fastest possible car. His beloved Tirana he spent a lot of money on. prisoners, one of which was Brendan Abbott, was arrested and found guilty of armed robbery offences in 1987. Two years later, Abbott and two companions escaped from the tailor's shop in the West Workshops. Dressed in self-made prison officer uniforms, they climbed into an air conditioning duct and threw the ceiling to the roof. They leapt from the armoury to the perimeter wall at the rear of the superintendent's residence. Abbott and Aaron Reynolds jumped successfully. The third prisoner fell and broke his leg. He was quickly recaptured. Brendan's first escape, he was a fugitive between 1989 and 1995. While Reynolds was arrested within weeks of the Fremantle escape, Abbott went on to establish himself as a professional bank robber, believed to have been responsible for 40 to 50 bank robberies across Western Australia, South Australia and Queensland's Gold Coast. Working in Abbott's favour, the Adelaide Police Force was structured with each suburb having its own CIB office, limiting communication between the departments and making Adelaide a repeated target. Rivalry between the states made intelligence sharing minimal and Western Australian police were yet to issue a warrant for Abbott's arrest. Almost five years following the escape, by 1994, the police states compromised and agreed to work together. Elevated to the status of Australia's most wanted man, his five and a half years on the run came to an end when police tracked down a post office box on Queensland's Gold Coast used by Abbott, which was found to contain a pager, a bill registered the address where he was living. On 26th of March 1995, Abbott was recaptured. Media reports in the 1990s said that Abbott sent postcards of his travels to the Western Australian Police Force. However, the story was a WA Police Media Unit concoction. The postcards were photos Abbott lost while running from the police with Aaron Reynolds after the Fremantle prison escape and were intended for his friends and family. Robbery in Mirabuka. It's also been revealed he was prepared to take hostages. The last image police have of fugitive bank robber Brendan Abbott caught on camera moments before his robbery on the Mirabuka branch of the Commonwealth Bank. The robber disguised as a middle-aged businessman. DNA tests have confirmed it was Abbott behind the robbery. Police today revealing they believe he could have intended taking hostages. Police say the ties, weapon and ammunition dispel myths of a modern-day Ned Kelly. He's just a bank robber. He's no Ned Kelly, he's not, um, and he's certainly no Robin Hood. I don't believe he's robbing from the rich to pay for the poor. Warned by Abbott can reveal a lot about his movement. Brendan Abbott, the postcard bandit. Truth be known, he never sent postcards to the police. He was dubbed the postcard bandit by media after the police had found rolls of undeveloped holiday snaps of Brendan while he was on the run. They included a picture of his accomplice Reynolds outside the dwelling of police station. 1997, less than three years after his recapture, Abbott escaped again with four other prisoners. Using angel wire, diamond encrusted wire, smuggled into the prison to cut through the bars in their cells. The escapees made it to the perimeter sense offence where they were thrown boat cutters by an accomplice, Brendan Berishan, who had been released in September. Uncharacteristically for Abbott, the escape involved actual force rather than the implied threat of force. While cutting through the sense of fencing, the alarm was raised. Berisham was armed and fired on patrol vehicle, successfully disabling it. Guards were pinned down by the shots. The offenders alleged that this occurred in panic when the escapees' escape plan went wrong. Although it gave the escapees enough time to cut through the fence and escape from the car driven by Berisham. Oh, can you believe this? That's the go.
Yeah. That's madness, isn't it? <laughs> they won't be handing out doll forms. <laughs> full on, man. Full on. Oh, it's big, man. It's big. And he's got heaps of it, too. It's man. <laughs> armor plate, armor piercing. Yeah. Oh, this is madness. This is grouse. That'd be the truck. <laughs> no good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. That'd have to be gone by now, eh? It's the real deal, believe me, it's the real deal, man. Oh, this is madness, isn't it? Yeah, it's not far. He was on the run until a major police operation caught him in Darwin in 1998. Abbott was on the run for six months from 1997 to 1998. On the 2nd of May 1998, he was eventually caught in Darwin and is as of March 2015, serving a 23-year sentence in Queensland for bank robberies and the 1997 prison escape. Following his recapture, Abbott was transferred to a maximum security at Woodford Correctional Centre. Due to Abbott's high-risk profile, he was flown into the prison by helicopter, being the only prisoner in Australia at the time to have arrived directly by air transfer. During Abbott's Queensland sentence, Western Australia twice refused Abbott's transfer applications in 2005 and 2008 to return to the state to complete his sentence. In 2004, Queensland authorities approved an interstate transfer, but Western Australia Attorney General Jim McGinty refused to accept him. In early 2007, Abbott reapplied to be transferred to Western Australia, and that was approved by the Queensland Attorney General in 2008. However, former WA Corrective Services Minister Margaret Kirk promptly released a media statement rejecting Abbott's bid to return home. Abbott had unsuccessfully applied for a transfer to Western Australia four times in response to outstanding warrants. On the 4th of May 2016, Abbott was extradited back to Western Australia to serve out his sentence of 16 years, 9 months and 2 days that he was serving for armed robberies and in his role in the Fremantle prison riot. At the time of his escape in 1989, 12 years, 6 months and 24 days, plus an additional one-third penalty of 4 years, 2 months and 8 days and forfeited remissions for escaping custody under the law then extent. On 16th of January 2017, Abbott was sentenced to an additional and cumulative five months in prison for the 1989 escape. Abbott was extradited from Queensland to Perth to serve what was left of a 16-year jail term. It came after he was granted parole about 17 years into his 25-year sentence for a string of bank robberies and prison breaks he'd committed during the time in the Sunshine State. He is now serving the rest of his time in the Casarina Prison. He will be eligible for parole Western Australia in July 2026 and his Western Australian sentence will expire in July 20. 
2033. If no further charges are laid against him, he will remain on parole in Queensland until 2014, when he will be 78 years of age. In June 2019, Abbott had a bid for freedom unanimously rejected by the WA Court of Appeal. Lawyers argued the sentence should be reduced because he already spent 17 years in prison in Queensland for crimes committed before he escaped Fremantle Prison in 1989. The court said the original sentence were appropriate and it would not intervene on the basis of mercy, noting Abbott had also deliberately committed subsequent crimes that led to his imprisonment in Queensland. The crimes Brennan committed and his life on the run and time in prison, then this book is for you. It is the most factual account you are going to get, with Brennan and his family also inputting into the narrative of the book. Australian Outlaw, the true story of postcard bandit Brendan Abbott, written by Derek Pedley. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to see more interesting crime content.